to focus on your paper, baby girl. All right. And let's see here. Everybody in class, we are continuing. Yesterday we talked about the Roaring Twenties, and we're going to kind of pick up with where that leaves off and go over a little bit further, okay? So you should have an article that's called The Great Depression. Hopefully that's what you guys have. And at... It has a jump start activity. We're not going to do that. Um, all right. I'm going down to the paragraph under the jump start activity. I will start reading and then I will probably have somebody come up to read here in a second or virtually you can volunteer too. Can I go first? No. Maybe. During the 1920s, under Presidents Warren G. Harding and Calvin Coolidge, the United States economy seemed strong. But in 1929, right at the end there, the year when Herbert Hoover became president, the country went from good times to bad in a hurry. In that year, a long and severe decline in the economy began. This decline became known as the Great Depression. How many of you have heard of the Great Depression, but maybe don't know? exactly sure what it. that I've means but you've heard of, heard of it. I know about it you might know about it but how many of you have at least heard of it even if you don't know exactly what they're talking about I know okay I know that people couldn't all right so let's see what exactly this means for those of you that don't already know let's look at what this means Shawnee Poo come on up yes you're gonna read no 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 just come on go. We, like there's a lot of reading today and yeah. not a lot of time. So here we go. Trouble for farmers. You're going to read all of the trouble for farmers. The United States economy seemed to be booming. In the 1920s, as the decade passed through, several signs suggested that the economy was not as strong as it seemed. Trouble was growing in the lives of farmers and factory workers. Most farmers never fully enjoyed good times of the 1920s. New technology should have made their work more Profitable. Profitable. Gas powered tractors and other machinery allowed farmers to grow more crops, but growing more crops turned into being a problem. The supply of food became greater than people's demand for it. All right. So they had a lot of new machinery, just like we had new machinery around that time for the war. But now the farmers have a lot of new machinery, but the demand for food is so high. They actually can't keep up with it. Um, so, Kendall, come on up and read more supply, less demand. How do they do that? Do they so, how we got. No, there's actually more supplies than the we'll demand. Demand. Okay, so let's, let's talk about it. Lower demand caused food prices to fall. Many farmers had taken out loans to pay for their expensive new machines. Now they couldn't make enough money to pay back the loans. Farmers... You know, pause, Kendall. You're right, Grayson. I said that backwards. The farmers used that new fancy equipment, and they ended up with way more food, and people didn't need that much food. So there's too much food, not enough people. Like, we couldn't eat the food as fast as farmers were gathering food for us. All right, carry on. Farmers who didn't buy modern equipment also suffered. Their costs for producing food were too high, they couldn't complete with the large farmers farms. Farm farm workers couldn't complete with the tractors. It seemed that their labor was no longer needed. In the 1920s, many may migrated migrated to the cities to find other work. These migrants often found that the supply of jobs was limited, even in the cities. Companies had built new factories and hired more workers to meet growing customer demand. By Amer but Americans could not consume all the goods being produced. Companies now had to cut production and jobs. All right. Thanks, Kendall. Okay. So the farmers made so much food. There's too much food. We can't eat it fast enough. They have these expensive new machines that they all bought, 
but because there's so much food, like they're not having, people aren't having to pay as much, right? So think about this. If Jason has a corn farm and he's got tons of corn, but Sean also has a corn farm and he's like, I want to sell my farm. I want to sell my corn. So if Jason's selling his for $5, Sean says, I can sell mine for four fifty. It's 50 cents cheaper. So whose corn are we going to buy? Sean's. But then Riley says, whoa, 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 guys. I'm going to sell my corn for $3. So now we all buy Riley's corn. Nobody's going to buy Jason's $5 corn. Nobody's going to yeah, buy Sean's four fifty corn. We got corn sitting here being wasted. And the prices are going down and down and down because the farmers just want to make any money at all. So even though they need to sell their corn for $5, all three of these farmers need to sell their corn for $5 to make enough money. But they can't sell their corn if they all stay at $5. So they keep cutting their prices trying to be the one that sells it. So, okay, Riley finally sells all of her corn for $3, but that's half as much as she needs to make. So Riley sold her corn, but she doesn't have enough money to pay her bills. I didn't cut So she corn. made money, but it's not enough. She cut the corn and I didn't. Okay, but you didn't sell any corn anymore, so you don't have enough to pay your bills either because you didn't sell your corn because it was too expensive. Look, Stop talking. You also didn't sell your corn because it was too expensive, so now you can't pay your bills either. So now none of them can pay their bills for different know. reasons. Their corn was too expensive. And her corn was so cheap, she didn't make enough. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah, now, I can't, I've got these new machines that can do all the farming for me. Do I need to pay Kaylee to work on my farm anymore? Yeah. No. Nope. So I'm going to cut my costs, okay? That's going to help me save some money on my bills. So I'm going to fire Kaylee. I don't need her on my farm anymore. Bye, Kaylee. Don't need you. Riley did it, not me. Riley fired you because she's only making $3 for corn. So she fired you. She can use her machine. Her big, expensive, fancy new machine. She can use her machine. She doesn't need you. You're fired. Yeah. So now Kaylee can't pay her bills because she don't have a job. Riley can't pay her bills because she didn't make enough. Sean and Jason can't pay their bills because they Riley, their prices are too high. Because of Riley. Okay. And everyone's depressed. All right. That's okay. Now, nobody has money. So Kaylee says, fine. There aren't any farming jobs around here because all of the people workers are getting replaced by machines. So Kaylee says, I'm going to the city. So the factories are like, yeah, you can come run one of the factory machines. But then the same problem happens. So many people start helping work at the factories. Now the factories are making too many things. And people don't need that much stuff from the factories. Hi, what are you doing? I don't have a work suit. We just read through all of that. Okay. All right. So, well... Other countries overseas that we usually trade with may not have a lot of money right now because they were paying for the war and everything that just it ended. Um, and overseas, I don't know how popular overseas trade was back then. I really don't know. I don't know the answer to that, Kane. I'm sure there was overseas trade happening, but it wasn't enough to sustain everybody and all of the products that we were making. Okay. So now the factories are overproducing. And can anybody afford to buy anything from the factory right now? No. If they can't even afford to pay the bills at their house, they're not going to go to the store and buy extra stuff, are they? No. Yeah. So we've got all these things, all these, all the food that's getting We're made by farmers, one. all the products that are getting made by factories, and nobody has any money to spend. Okay? So this is getting to be a problem because we've got lots of stuff, but then nobody have any money to spend. Okay. Stock market crash, Fiona. By the late 18, 1920s, the signs of trouble, trouble were clear. Factories were leaving workers go or not hiring new workers. Unemployment, the condition of being out of work, was rising. Without jobs, Americans could not afford to buy new products. People began to buy less. This inaugural in, in this inaugural address, Pre President Hoover told the American people, "I have no fears the fu for the future of our country. It is bright with hope." President Herbert Hoover, inaugural address, 1929. Seven months later, the stock market crashed. 
The stock market is where people buy and sell stock. A crash is a sudden steep drop in stock prices. Stocks are shares in the ownership of a company. If a company wants to raise money, it sells stock. The value or price of stock generally rises when a company does well. But if it falls, a company, if a, a company does poorly. All right. So let's talk about stocks for a second, because that's a little confusing, I think, even for me as a grown up. So I imagine it's super confusing for you guys. So how many of your parents have ever talked about the stock market? Have you ever heard your parents talk about the stock market? No, but I know Mr. Brown. And or heard anybody. You've at least heard the term, but maybe don't know what on earth it is. Z, okay, tell so me what you know. I know that. So, like, um, you know, Sean like, and Peter. if you have a phone, like, for example, if you have a phone, it shows you the stocks on it. You can look at that. And then, so, um, there's, like, stocks in the stock market. So, my, um... My cousin's dad talks about them a lot, and like, so like John Deere, they're us, uh, they're in the stocks. You buy stocks in them, and then you're a part owner of that company, and you pay to. All right. Yes. So if you um own stock, you actually own a tiny piece of the company. So Zeke mentioned John Deere. We've all heard of like John Deere tractors and whatnot, right? John um, Deere. I could even look around the room and be like, okay, Nike. It's a big major company we've all heard of. Okay, I could go buy a share of Nike stock, and now I own part of the company Nike. True fact. What? But am I like automatically a bazillionaire because I own part of Nike? Yes. No, no because like a bazillion people also own stock well, in Nike, yes. and they only sell a certain percentage of the company. So if I am the actual owner of Nike, mm. I say. Okay, I own 100% of the company, but I'm going to say 20% of it, I'm going to sell to Americans Ooh, or like whoever, Jordan's anybody out there. You can own up to 20% of my company, but I still own the majority of it. I still own 80%, and so I'm making 80% of the profits on my company. Now, that 20% is broken up into what's called shares. Zeke can buy a share, Sean can buy a share, you get a share, and you get a share, and you get a share. Now, you have to pay a lot of money for it. A share of Nike might cost you a couple hundred bucks. Oh, not bad. Now, what happens when you get the share? Nothing. It's worth exactly what you bought it for. Oh. So, what, what happens is, okay, say Nike comes out with a new shoe, like a new Jordan, okay? Jordans don't make any more shoes. I, whatever. Um, they come out with a new something shoe. And it's incredibly popular. It's the best tennis shoe ever made. Everybody's running out there. Nike can't make these shoes fast enough. Nike the price of Nike is going to go up. Oh, oh, oh. So oh, Zeke oh. bought, so let's say Zeke bought his share of Nike for 100 bucks. Well, now a share of Nike is worth $200. So Zeke kind of just made 100 bucks because if he turned around and sold that share back to Nike, he'd make $100 because Nike will buy it back for 200 and he only spent 100 to buy it. Does that make sense? Kind of, sort of. Yeah, now, what if they make a new shoe and it's absolutely the ugliest shoe in the whole world? And then they're like, oops, my bad. And then they make another shoe and it's also like terrible and somebody famous breaks their foot wearing it. And so they're getting a lot of bad press. Their shoes are no good anymore. Nobody likes Nike anymore. Their prices drop. Now the share is only worth $20. Zeke paid 100 for it. That means he just lost 80 bucks. So the price of the stocks is constantly changing. Yeah, well, like what happened? Get, um, on your, look on your phone and click on stocks. I know, I know, I know, I know. So hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. So what happens here when it says the stock market crash, the prices of everything and the value of everything was low, right? Because I want to sell my corn for $5. I can't. So the prices are dropping. And that's with everything. Corn, beef, turkey. Toys, games. Um, water bottles, like no matter what people were buying, clothing, everything is like really, really cheap because nobody can afford for it to be more than that. So the prices of the stocks are getting so low that it just bottoms out and it's called the stock market crash because nothing was worth anything. Everything was basically worth nothing because nobody had any money and nobody would spend their money because they needed to hold on to the little bit of money that they had. Um, I got a lot of hands in the air. Um, Kane, 
if someone if it's already broke their foot because he knifed it then knife wouldn't knife get sued? Probably. Yeah. That's a whole separate issue. Just go with me on the price of the stocks, okay? DJ. I actually know that if the stock goes down, you actually it you actually get in debt. You could if you owned enough of that stock, yes. Yeah, if you if you owned enough to where you didn't have enough money. To buy yeah. yourself out, yes, you yeah, could. You would, you would lose money. money. Yeah, people don't like it when the prices in the stock market go down because they're losing money. Lily. Yeah. Yes. All right. So, um, Josie. Um, I want to know. Okay. Zeke. Um, I want to know if you like people like wasn't another part of it that people were like stop trusting banks yeah we're and not there yet we're gonna get there we're gonna get there we're gonna get there we're gonna get all right lily's going all right lily's gonna keep reading we're not there yet this part yeah buying on credit here comes lily during the 1920s some people got rich and many others hoped to People bought stocks hoping to resell them for a big profit, but many did not buy stocks with their own money. Instead, they used credit or borrowed money. These people expected stock prices to keep rising. Then they could pay back their loans and still make a profit. If, if stock prices fell, they might owe more money than their stocks were worth. They could lose everything. In the 1920s, stock prices stock prices rose unusual, unusually fast and people invested. Then in late 1929, stock prices began to fall. Many people worried about losing money, so they sold their stocks. Other panic, others panicked. They sold their stocks for whatever price they could get. As a result, stock prices fell by one-third. People rushed to sell more stocks and prices kept falling. Many people had paid much more for their stocks than they were now worth. These people were ruined financially. All right. So say I bought $500 worth of stocks in various companies. But then I realized that everything's like the prices are dropping, the prices are dropping, and I'm like, Oh no, this isn't worth anything anymore. These five hundred dollars isn't worth five hundred dollars anymore. It's, it's only worth twenty five. Twenty five dollars. Five hundred dollars and now it's only worth twenty five. That's that a huge that difference, that right? Huge difference. This is exactly realistic for what happened then. So yes. It's that it turned into twenty five bucks. Yes. And so people have literally no money. When it says they were financially ruined, like financially it's your money. They were ruined. They had no money left. They spent all their money because, okay, so the prices were low. Riley's corn's only three fifty. dollars I'm going to stock up. I'm going to spend all my money on Riley's corn because it's cheap, right? But then Riley's farm goes out of business. She can't, she can't keep up. And so now I have all of this money invested in Riley's farm, and it's worth nothing. So now all that $500 I invested in Riley... She's like, here's 25 bucks. I'm sorry. I'm out of business now. So now I have yeah. nothing left. So, okay? uh, if you pay and so this is what happened. People lost hundreds and hundreds of dollars. Ms. Your Fab. business also went bankrupt. Okay. Never mind. So, bankrupt. So like, so like there's, so if, uh, say if yeah. I buy Five shares of each company worth $100. They actually turned each one worth $5. Yeah, basically. Yeah. I would have had Okay. The Great Depression begins. Who wants to read? Me. Me, 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 no, me, me somebody me, that has already read. Jason. The Great Depression begins. The crash was just one Listen, several, guys. one of several causes of what is known as the Great Depression. The Great Depression was the longest and most severe economic decline in the United States history. Economy goes through ups and downs all the time. A depression begins as a normal downturn in the economy. economy. In the late 1920s, the overprodu overproduction of goods caused a downturn. The stock market crashed 
and buy, the buying of stocks with borrowed money help borrowed money help the downturn grow, grow into a depression after a year after the crash after a year a year after the crash came the first bank panics consumers had bought cars and other goods on credit now they could not pay their loans many banks ran out of funds and had to close people who had savings in those banks lost them customers of other banks raced to withdraw their savings many of those saving banks ran out of cash and had to close too all right listen to this now so what this means is okay so I, I go buy a car cars are cheap right now I go buy a car okay but most of the time when you buy a car or a house or something big like that you don't just be like here's the cash okay I buy it through the bank which means I buy it on credit I get a loan yeah. and then each month I pay the bank here's a hundred bucks towards my car and in the next month here's another hundred bucks towards my car and here's another hundred bucks so every month I pay the bank a hundred bucks towards my car and I'm paying off that bill so maybe I originally paid I don't know twenty thousand for my car and then it takes me five years I'm paying off a hundred bucks at a time hundred bucks at a time and eventually years later I pay it off because I can't afford 20,000 all at once, yeah. like, but I can afford a hundred dollars a month. And so this is how people buy cars and houses because most people can't just afford 20,000 plus on a car or hundred thousand, 200,000 plus on a house, right? So you get a mortgage on your house or you get a loan on your car. Okay. So the bank let me borrow that money because they know I have to pay it back. Well, now what happens is I can't pay my bills because my, my I lost all money. my money on Riley's silly corn farm and so now I have no money I can't pay for my hundred dollars a month and, the bank takes away your car. and so the bank number one takes away my car because I can't pay for it anymore it's called repossessed they oh, take my, my car now now but here's the deal they take my car but nobody's buying cars right now because ain't nobody got no money so they can't get their money back so they lost money so say I'd only paid two thousand back so they lost the bank just lost eighteen thousand dollars on me the bank can't afford to lose money because now they, they don't have more money to loan to other people they and then say Grayson comes to the bank and he's like I would like to withdraw money from my savings account please and they're like we're out. We don't have any money. We're out of it because Bab didn't pay her stupid bills. Oh. And so Grayson can't even, it's his money. He has money in the bank. Yeah, and the bank has to But the bank that. doesn't actually have all that cash on hand. So say all of us have a bank account at, I don't know, Commerce Bank. Sure Commerce yeah. Bank, and say we all have hundreds of $200 in the bank account. Commerce Bank doesn't oh, actually just have all of that money sitting in a little box that says Riley's account, Zeke's account, Sean's account. It, it's kind of like um oh, like virtual right like they just say Riley has 200 and Grayson has 200 and Zeke has 200 and everybody has 200 like but if all of us went to the bank at the same time and said give me all my money they don't actually have that much cash on hand but everybody got afraid that the banks were gonna run out of money because nobody was paying their bills and so I'm like okay I'm not paying my bills but I do want the little bit of money that I do have in the bank so I'm like okay I want to withdraw my money and they're like well, Sam didn't pay his bills. We don't have enough money to give you. Kane didn't pay his bills. We don't have enough money to give you back. Hey. And so now the banks are running out of money. And so the bank, supposedly, I'm supposed to have money in my savings account, but the bank can't actually give it to me. So now I really can't pay my bills. I'm literally out of money. I have nothing. Riley handed me 25 bucks for my stocks. I went to go get the rest out of my savings account, and the bank said they don't have any money to give me. Mr. Banks went Riley, out of business. Riley stole Sit. it from you. Sit. Quit worrying about the example so literally and just pay attention and quit doing that because you are sitting in the front of the class distracting everybody. Okay. Z. So, like, in the banks, like, so the banks are part of the community and they, you know how, like, so the stores restock every once in a while when they run out of goods. And so the bank has to pay for that too, don't they? Yes, sure. No. 
Mm, not even that. Okay. We're not going to have time to finish this today. Um, Grayson. So this is back when we were um, like paying off cars and stuff. Well, my mom, you probably don't know this, but she has her FJ Cruiser mm -hmm. that she drives, and they're just now getting it paid off. Yeah. It takes a long time to pay off a car because you only pay a couple hundred bucks a month. But when you bought your car, it was usually several thousand dollars. So it takes a long time. Usually people put a car on like a three or a five year loan. People put houses on a 30 year loan. Yeah. That's yeah. So yeah, I'm going to be paying for my house for another 28 years. I've been paying on it for two, 28 years from now. Miss Bab will own her house. Do you think I'm still going to be living in that same house in 28 years? No, no. maybe. Maybe. You could become an old lady with 10 cats. Old lady with 10 cats. I got three of them that's already. Nice. I just yeah. need seven more. Can I go back I'm working on it, guys. All I'm right. Go now. Um, okay. It is about time for us to pack up and go today. Um, so even though there's a little bit more of this article, we'll have to talk about it next week. Stop, Joe. Pill, stop. Yes. I said yes to you forever ago. Um, okay. So that's it for today. It was just discussion. There's no, like, work that goes with it or anything, guys. Yes, um, if, if it says answer questions, you don't have to answer questions. Um, we're just going to have discussion on Tuesday next week to finish this up. Um, and then we'll go from there. But that is it for today. Um, Grace, is your writing paper good for me to go ahead and grade at this point? I know um, Miss Beckett said yeah. you guys were going to look at it again. Is it where you want it to be? Yeah. Okay. All right, good. All right, so then you guys were good to go. I'm going to hit stop record. You guys have a lovely.